So it looks like, guys, that the uh, Mr. T Lexify drama is not over, not by a long shot, as um, Ren has decided to respond to the allegations, and we've got a lot to talk about, to say the least. So the reason I say we have a lot to talk about is, well, um, her response video is a grand total of two hours, and that's a long time. Um you know, there's a lot to cover. Most of these other videos have only been about 20 minutes, half an hour long. It's been pretty easy to break down, but this might be a different story. She's clearly said a lot, so I'm going to watch it, we're going to break it down, and we're going to have some fun with it. So, let's go. So, Ren has got her comments switched off for this video, which I noticed immediately, and I've not even watched the video yet as I'm recording this, bear that in mind. So, it's quite interesting that she's done that, really, because the other YouTubers didn't. I know Lex didn't, people commented, um, and he left them open. I mean, I'm not sure whether she's chosen to do that because she's getting bullied online, which, you, you know what, fair enough, it's not nice to be bullied online. But in retrospect, it could mean she's hiding something, and she doesn't want people calling her out for lying. I've got no idea, but it's interesting that she's turned off the comments. It makes you feel a bit like wondering why she's turned them off, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Just before we go further into the video, so this is me from the future just slightly, um, just letting you guys know, um, as I'm reacting to this, I'm reacting to it as I'm watching it, so my opinions and views on certain aspects may change throughout this video, so if I say something that you disagree with, please watch on a little bit ahead because I might say the correct thing or the thing that um, should have been said. Um, later on in the video because obviously th things um, change throughout the video of what she says and the evidence that she provides um, It's just um, just before I start as well. I find it a real shame. That I'm making videos like this. I'm not really um, Finding it great at the moment that um, this is what I've resorted to um, But I just think the community should be made aware of what's going on with all these youtubers and all the rest of it Not because I want to exploit them and be horrible and all the rest of it But these are serious allegations that should be nowhere near YouTube under any circumstances Whatsoever and people should not be part of the platform if this is the kind of uh, things that have been going around uh, At the moment it's very very sad to hear so I just want to re-emphasize that and I hope you enjoy this is around the time when Lex started texting my mom as well, and he started harassing her, telling her that people were harassing Lex, calling him a pedophile and groomer for what he did to Alex. Alex is a 13-year-old girl that he confirmed he's talked to about relationship stuff with. Lex tries to frame it as if he had no ill intentions with her, but Alex clearly feels a different way, and she was the one who went through it. Alex has came forward herself and stated her own opinions on Lex and how she felt with him. When I was 17 years old, and I was dating Lex while he was 20 years old, I found out about Alex, and I immediately knew that he was going to try to do to Alex what he had been doing to me since I was 15 years old. He was going to try and entice another fangirl with his status and power dynamic. Rather than help her and realize that we were both victims at that point, I made Lex block her on every platform that he talked to her on. I told him that our relationship was going to be over if he didn't because that's truly how I felt. Lex blocking her made her very sad, which is understandable because he was most definitely grooming her on the side of grooming me. Lex. So the first part of this video, Ren goes straight into the fact that Lex has been talking to a 13 year old about his troubles and at the time was harassing her mum and Ren claimed that she tried to stop Lex from um, contacting this girl by telling him to block her and delete her immediately. This is then followed by Lex when contacting her, Ren's mum saying that people are harassing him for contacting this Alex girl and claiming that um, he is a paedophile and all sorts of um, shenanigans and obviously to be fair it's not right that he spoke to this 13 year old it's very very strange behavior I'm giving you that it's not good that he's doing this at all um, and to be quite honest with you if what Ren says is true on this part um, yeah he's not really got much defense on that I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest with you I don't defend Lex in any way talking to a 13 year old girl end of conversation it is completely not the right thing to do so after reflection um, Ren realized that Alex was being groomed as well as herself because Alex came out on Twitter and said that when Ren told Lex to block her and not message her anymore, Alex got very upset about it, which means that Alex had feelings for Lex or felt something for Lex. And it was clear from that that um, she was being abused by him and manipulated into liking him at such a young age. 
So this 13-year-old girl situation, it's not looking great. I mean, it's just something you don't do. You just don't talk to a 13-year-old. I say that in my last video regarding the OJ456 response on, on this. Um, and to be fair, if all these screenshots of Alex and etc. are real, not really a great start. I'm not saying this means that the stuff with Ren is true. I've not looked into that yet as I'm talking. But um, regarding the Alex stuff, I mean, it's already been confirmed. It's, it is really, you even admitted that he spoke to her. And if the age is true and whatever, um, then we've got a problem. He started with Lex grooming me at the age of 15. Lex was 18 years old at this point. Our relationship was never normal. And there was always an obvious power dynamic from the start. I started off as a fan of Lex's. And Lex would use his power to manipulate me into being silent about what was happening behind closed doors. We formed an online relationship before we met in person with the intentions of dating in 2017. We formed an online relationship in 2016, proceeded to know each other for a year, and then met each other in 2017. Now, I'm no body language expert for this next bit, but when I saw this bit when she was talking about the um, situation, about the age gap and stuff between both of them, saying how much Re Le Lex abused her with gifts and the fact that he was 50, you know, she was 15 and he's 20 at the time which 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 is, looks to me to be true to be fair it looks to me though that she looks like she's fake crying in this i could be wrong um but to me it doesn't look very genuine so to me i'm a bit like skeptical of what she's saying at the moment so i'm going to keep watching but it's looking a bit weird at first i was very shy to lex's money but as we continued dating he showed me that money was just a number to him lex lived a luxury lifestyle with the money he made from youtube and he was introducing me to that lifestyle at a very young age lex promised me that he would take care of me and that he would be my provider that is a common way for groomers to get their victims to rely on them it makes it easier to isolate me if lex knew i was dependent on him either way the money that lex was spending on me was able to be used in his taxes as write-offs because he doesn't have a normal job any money he spent outside of california was able to be used as a business tax right off like the interesting thing about this next bit for me regarding the money so she speaks about money and how that she was really shy for the money didn't want like spending anything but then um she made he made it out so she'd be used to that lifestyle all the rest of it and lex did admit he bought a lot of stuff at the time um in his other video but he also admitted that she was um, literally being money greedy at the, um, at the same time, especially towards the end of the relationship where she, um, if he didn't send money, she'd expose him. Well, he's been exposed anyway because he did stop sending money. Um, interestingly enough, though, it's a bit weird, this one, because I'm a bit um, conflicted with it because they're both saying completely the opposite things and it's confusing but i think to be fair lex was talking about ren wanting money from the end of the relation towards the end of the relationship where she took the mick and this is talking about when they were first together so a bit like 50 50 at the moment um of what to believe so i'm going to watch a bit more then come back to you with another opinion if there's more evidence Ren then shows a little bit more evidence saying that Lex will be her provider and uh, will do anything for her essentially. Um, and does re-emphasise her age quite a lot of her being 16 years old at the time with dates. And if she was this age, again, she's kind of right. I'm not even going to dispute that. Um, Lex was talking to her when she was 16. Fair enough. Not great. But, in retrospect, you could argue that it was of legal age, but she never shows anything when she was 15, but she claims the text messages have gone missing. And, to be fair, the age gap isn't too big either. It's a three-year age difference. Now, I'm not saying it's correct that um, Lex is speaking to a 15-year-old girl with him being 18, but the age gap isn't actually that big. It's not like she's 12 and he's 18. It's only a three-year age different, and people get in three-year age relationships all the time. Again, I'm not justifying this, because at the end of the day, she's technically still in school. But to say that he's a paedophile, it could be a bit much. And to say that he's an abuser could, again, could be a bit much. Um, because the age difference to me is not like, whoa. Because if she was 16, this would be completely fine. So it's a very, like... It's an edgy one for me. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I'm talking rubbish. Maybe you guys can tell me how much of an idiot I am and um, how wrong I am. Maybe I am. But my perspective is it's like, it's wrong. It's not right, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And I think it's been over-exaggerated. But 
it's like it's weird i feel like people use the word legal and all the rest of it too much again it's technically illegal i think if i'm correct if it's not again i don't really know but i'm just going to re-emphasize it's weird but not the worst thing in the world. Hi, this is my encounter with Lex raping me. The first time Lex raped me was when I was 16 years old. And in my first Google document that he never addressed, I go into detail about how Lex orally raped me multiple times at the Z house, even when I told him no. Lex would beg me over and over until I eventually gave in, leaving me to feel guilty with myself. Lex wouldn't take no for an answer. And at this point, I was 16 years old and Lex is 19 years old. Lex would get me high and drunk and then take me into the room at the end of the night with him. The first time I ever got drunk with him is when I recorded these videos at the Z house. Lex claims I look happy in these videos, but I'm incredibly intoxicated. I'm keeping this bit as short as possible, but um, Ren goes into the whole um, rape situation in this and claims that um, Lex raped her after the videos that she made of them two together where he was sort of touching her. And to be fair, they are pretty creepy and weird. You can watch that yourself. I'm not putting that on this channel. Absolutely not. But the point is, is it's... I can't even describe this. The point I'm trying to make is I don't get why Ren would even film this and then claim that she was uh, raped afterwards. There's literally no evidence at all of this being the case. And yes, he did touch her weirdly and do this, but it doesn't mean that he then raped her afterwards. There's not enough evidence to support this claim, unfortunately. And if it is true, I'm sorry, Ren, but I can't believe you on this evidence alone. You have to provide a heck of a lot more because it's just not feasible literally after i just said that um, i just watched the next part she showed more evidence and the evidence is not looking great on lex's part unfortunately you can see him you know kissing her, all the rest of it um but she says she was 16 and he was 19 18 but um but it's you know she's no longer 15 but there's no evidence of anything going on when she was really 15 so that's interesting to me but she claims that she was raped but in the picture that I actually just saw, which does look very wrong and weird, and I don't know why, it's, it is a bit, it's, it's disgusting. It's not something I want to see on YouTube. Um, it doesn't look like rape, because she looks like she's very consensual to it, and she says she's not, but in the picture, she doesn't look like she was intoxicated at all. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I can't see that. I really can't see that. And then goes on to read a bunch of very creepy messages. I won't even sugarcoat this. They are very weird messages that um, Lex sent to her via Twitter. I mean, there are all these weird email screenshot things. Whether they're legit or not is another matter. I've got no idea. But what I can see at face value, they're very creepy. And him saying that stuff makes me very uncomfortable. It's just, no. It's the stuff you don't say, man. It's very, very weird. So then she goes on to, you know, send more screenshots of these messages and explain them in a bit more detail. But there's one interesting thing that I'm getting from this that's confusing me a little bit. You guys might know I'm not from the US, but I googled it anyway. So I googled the age of consent um, in the United States and it literally says 16 as the lowest age. But if they had sex at 16 and she said it was not consensual, not of age... Am I missing something here? Because to me that does sound legal. I'm not saying she consented to it because I've not got a clue to be honest with you. She says she didn't and there's evidence to support that she might have not done. But again, we don't fully know the truth because we weren't in the room at the time, obviously. So no one's ever going to know and the evidence is going to be a lot weaker than it would have been at the time. Anyway, um, overall though, I'm confused. I don't know. Um, but the age of consent, as far as I'm aware, is 16 in the US. That's what it says on Google. So unless you guys can tell me otherwise, then I'm baffled. So in this... I'd like to spend some time to talk about how Lex said that I have a fake ID and that I used my fake ID to get into places or that I used my fake ID to buy other minors drugs or alcohol. I did mention earlier that Lex was buying me weed and alcohol to properly get me drunk and high so that he could rape me. Even though Lex was only 20 years old, he was able to buy these substances because he was the one who had a fake ID. Lex bought himself a fake ID and shipped it to himself in the mail and used that fake ID to purchase alcohol and marijuana in America. The legal drinking age in Canada is 19 years old, meaning that Lex was already able to be drinking in his hometown and in his home country 
So Lex had to buy a fake ID specifically for whenever he came to America to be with me or to be with anybody at the Z house. In these screenshots here, you can see that Lex is talking to me about buying himself a fake ID, saying, apparently my fake IDs came in. I have to go and pick them up. Lex then texted me a few days later saying, also, just use my fake ID buying alcohol to test it out and it worked. So I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Lex is saying that he's very proud to have a fake ID and he's very proud to know that it worked in America. Lex confirms that he used his fake ID multiple times in America by saying, I might get really fucked up tomorrow night by drinking because my card works here. And man, I hope you don't get mad at me for going out because I'm gonna wanna make love to you right after. Next section, Ren talks about the fake ID situation. So um, she claims that when Lex moved to the US uh, for that short period of time he did, um, he um, got a fake ID so that he could buy things like alcohol and other things like that. Um, because in Canada, he could buy it, but in, when he's in the US, he couldn't because in the US, the legal drinking age and all the rest of it is 21 years of age. And I'm not saying this is a good idea, a good thing to do, but people do do it. People do it because, you know, fake ID, they can do what they want, want to do. It's like they want to be included and all the rest of it, they want to feel cool. And if he's done it before in Canada and whatever, it's probably thinking, no big deal. And to be fair, it's not a big deal to me either. But, 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 but. Ren then claims that he bought these the things like alcohol and stuff so then he could take advantage of it later on. Um, and judging by the messages and the screenshots we have been provided, um, all the rest of it, it could be potentially true. Um, again, we don't know for sure. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but from the messages and the way he words things and what she's saying, it's it's not great. I mean, it's annoying because I made a video about, about Lex saying that I'm sorry, but now I'm conflicted again. There's just so much to take in. It's what well, at this stage it's becoming so opinion based. Like we don't know who who's telling the truth and who's not. I think to be fair, we have to wait for this to go to court because it seems like they're both going to take legal action. Anyway, guys, I'm going to make a part two and part three and all the rest of it to this video. It's far too long to explain everything now, but I'm going to sort of break it down in little chunks. So that's my thoughts and feelings about what I've seen so far and all the rest of it. Again, you guys might have different opinions. It's very hard to to like. Don't talk about this stuff and um, be on the mark when you're watching something like this because you just have to just consider so many things. It's like everyone's just said different things. You've had Noah, you've had Lex, you've had Ren now. Everyone's just saying all these different things, finding different pieces of evidence. And it's like we're getting shown things that they want us to see. And obviously that makes sense. They're not going to expose themselves, especially in cases like this. So it's so hard to tell what's true. But it seems like to me so far that everyone is in the wrong in some way, shape or form and that's the problem and we need to just sort of you know wait till it goes to court i guess um to find out what's really true but i'm still going to carry on breaking this down and share my thoughts and feelings i think it's good that we speak about this like i keep saying because we need to we need to understand that these youtubers shouldn't be part of this kind of stuff and i want to re-emphasize that this is what happens when you're a YouTuber. You get up to stupid, stupidness like this and all this disgraceful stuff. You're going to get exposed and your life's going to turn upside down. So this is why we need to show these other YouTubers out there that it's not okay to, to you know, behave like this. Just because you're a big YouTuber doesn't give you the right to then be a disgraceful human being like let power and fame get to your head, which is what's probably happened in this in this situation. And it's very unfortunate. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video about this. Peace out.